So we're in your government book. We're in chapter two, and we'll get, we're in chapter two, we're talking about the different types of government, government rules. And, and we went over the two different types being um, autocracy or autocracy, which is ruled by one, or democracy, ruled by many. We went over the autocratic type governments, which include dictators and monarchs. And now we're gonna get into um, the what democracy is and the problems with democracy. So democracy being meaning the rule by many. And today the word democracy is used very loosely to describe any system of government in which the people have a role in making the government policy. Um, government policy. So a lot of people think democracy is most appealing because it's ruled by the people, right? Many people are ruled by the people. So there's different types of um, democracy and one of the types, well, two different types actually, there's direct democracy and there's indirect democracy. Direct democracy is the true, truest form, uh, is basically the people ruling and indirect democracy is basically um, by representation. The people elect somebody to speak for them. So the first we're gonna talk about is direct um, uh, democracy and in history. And here's some of the ruins of the ancient Roman um, forum that stand as a memorial to the once great Republic of Rome, you know, so, and the democracy that existed there. So um, when we think of democracy in the truest form is where the people rule directly by a popular vote. And true democracies are very rare in world history. Even when you think of um, ancient Rome or ancient, let's, let's talk about ancient Athens. Ancient Athens was a Greek and it was a textbook example of a democracy. But really, it was more idea than reality because in Athens, one-fifth of the inhabitants were citizens. The other four-fifths were slaves and couldn't vote. So only one-fifth of the people would vote. And then it became the rule of 30 tyrants as 30 different men were ruling um, as re representing the people, but they weren't, they were considered tyrants. So Athens fell in their democracy. After about 200 years, democracy didn't last. It came into a mob type rule. And then another, another example of democracy would be in Switzerland. So we're talking about Switzerland here. Switzerland is a model in the modern times but it too, it's limited direct democracy as the Swiss citizens voice um, their decisions of the government, but certain acts of legislation and executive decisions are exempted. So basically they don't really have a pure form of democracy. One of the purest forms of democracy would be in the New England town meeting. So what's the New England town meeting? Well, basically a small, small amount of people in, a, in the town of New England, New England in uh, Massachusetts area, the citizens would govern their, just their local community. Like you would say, maybe, you know, um, a small, you know, a small city or a small town. And they would have regular meetings and all the people would vote on important decisions. So they have a vote. They wouldn't have a vote for a um, mayor or representative, but they vote all vote equally on the decisions of what to do. And so direct democracy works best where the population is very small. Because when you have a huge amount of people um, vote, not only voting, but on, on different issues, you know, you have them um, presenting different issues, it gets very, very complicated. So, um, but direct democracy, direct democracy may work on a very small population. Like I'm, I'm talking even, even 50 or 100 people um, would be um, in ruling and in democracy would be, um, e even that would be hard. So direct democracy is fatal for larger states. Usually where they try direct democracy, it ends up in a mob type rule. And then a certain leader comes in, a dictator or a tyrant comes in and takes over, a totalitarian um, tyrant takes over. So democracies usually end 
in um, not good state. You know, they end, end up in a horrific situation. But indirect democracy. So what is indirect democracy? And it's the most common today. And the people are ruling indirectly through electing representatives. That's what we do. We elect our senators and we elect our House of Representatives, you know, and we elect our presidents and vice presidents and, you know, such. Um, there's two different types of indirect democracy we see here. And one is parliamentary democracy, like in, in the British. In the British system in England, they have a parliament. They have, actually have a king or a queen, but they have a parliament that represents the people. And this parliament is called parliamentary democracy. In the United States, though, and in other um, democratic republic states, I should say, we have a democratic republic. And that's what we have, is we have a republic, not only as a republic, a republic, but it's a constitutional republic. And that's what we have, similar to what they had started in Rome. You know, but even the Roman Empire fell. Guess why the Roman Empire fell? Because of sin, right? And to America, they fall because of sin. You know, we know that represents the righteousness exalts a nation. We talked about that already. But anyway, um, we have, a, if we say what type of um, government do we have? We have a republic. We have um, a republic, constitutional republic with a constitution. The problem with democracy here, and it tells about the problem of democracy, history shows that democracy usually ends in anarchy, that's chaos, and um, gradually into tyranny, having one leader take over, you know, in the midst of a mob, right? The problem with democracy is that, again, um, sin the sinful human nature, the tendency to rebel against the authority of God, and not to unite with each other, right, in the midst. It says, if God's principles are not accepted as bindings on a nation that wants to be democratic, then the only absolute becomes the will of the people. This democracy quickly deteriorates to an anarchy. So even democratic republics will fail. Inevitably, leaders uh, promise the most, Whoever, the leader that promises the most um, gets elected, right? And stays in office because they can talk very eloquently and talk people in and convince them of the in the majority. Majority rules is not always a good thing. Let's just say that. And we take Rome here. Let's take this Rome. It says Rome was um, in moral decline in society. Rome's republic thrived, you know, and it ended up deteriorating in mob rule um, because the rise of the Roman empires then came. So what happened is they had a democracy, a republic in fact, and they were electing their representatives to a Senate, like similar to ours. But then what happened in the midst of um, the, the, sin of the sin and chaos, the de um, democracy fell into mob rule and then the rise of the Roman Empire, starting with Julius Caesar and on to other Caesars that were very horrific, that took over and ruled Rome um, in a horrific sense and persecuting Christians all the way through. So the United States um, moved away from the federal and constitutional republic. Uh, the United States has been, basically they're saying the United States has been moving away from being a, a constitutional republic. We know that. Actually, what's happening in the world is now a lot of globalism, you know, a lot of globalism now considered as democratic is not. Globalism is looking for this new world order, which will eventually be run by the Antichrist, right? And, um, but before that, um, will become the rapture of the church and Jesus will take us out. But globalism is not a good place to, and to function on in the midst of, and a democracy tends to now point that way, even in the United States. So, um, um, the American founding fathers, let's see here, let me go on here. So, 
So right here is very, I like this saying by um, James Madison. So um, the American founder, founding fathers recognized uh, the problem with democracy. And um, James Madison confirmed this in his Federalist Papers number 10. I mean, Federalist Papers are uh, Madison, James Madison, uh, you know, and um, um, uh, the, let's see, Alexander Hamilton and John Jay. I was thinking of the names, but James Madison was one of the Federalist writers of the Federalist Papers. It says, democracies have ever been spectacles of turbulence and contention and have ever been found incompatible with personal security or the rights of property and have in general been as short in their lives as they have been in their violent deaths. Basically saying democracy in itself has been very turbulent, has had a lot of contention, a lot of chaos, and has been very incompatible with personal security, taking care of people, you know, and protecting people's rights and has very been short lived in many areas and has ended up with violent deaths. When I say violent deaths, having terrible, terrible um, fascist communists, communists use, try to use democracy in bringing up through communism, you know, so they have these um, tyranny of leaders that just come in and take over thinking they use it, the whole chaos in the midst of the chaos, they can come in and take over and um, control all people, so. So um, this last part we're going into now is the uh, Constitutional Republic. So the Constitutional Republic, Constitution is important. The American uh, Founding Fathers firmly believed in the biblical doctrine of man's sin nature and wisely shunned both um, autocracy and democracy or autocracy and democracy, um, basically sh shunned both. And um, they shunned both in that point, knowing that they would both live, lead, lead to tyranny. Um, and basically shielded away from monarchies, of course, because they came uh, from against the king and queen of England. And so, uh, and they read the history of democracy and they knew that democracy would not survive. So they wanted a balance between the two. And this representative government would combine the elements of both, of autocracy, ruling by one, with the elements of democracy, ruling by many. And this would work well in which the power was limited and restrained by the rule of law. The result was they put together a constitution. So this constitution, let's go into the next, and I'll, I'll come back here. A constitutional republic. So uh, the, as a form of government in which the people and their representatives are limited by a constitution. So you have a republic like they did in, um, in Rome. You have a republic with elected individuals, but you also have a constitution which limits. And so really the president of the United States is, to, is the one to uphold the constitution of the United States. So we don't, we're not ruled by um, a tyranny or a dictator or a monarch. We're ruled, we're not ruled, we're actually ruled by the rules of a constitution and our leaders are supposed to uphold this constitution. That's why the constitution is so important, so important, in, especially in America. A republic means res publica, means the public thing. Now a form, it's now a form of government in which the voters elect others to represent them in government. That's a republic. The United States um, has a written constitution to uphold a republic. So we're a, re, we're a constitutional republic. Now England, they have a parliament, right? Um, but they also have a constitution, but their constitution is not written down. It's just found in the customs and the traditions and the written documents of England that they go by. So they don't have a written constitution. A lot of countries don't have a written constitution. It's very fortunate that we have amazing 
written constitution that was based on our forefathers who based it on the Bible. So, um, both the constitutions, written and unwritten, um, are ruled by established law rather than by immediate will of the people. And this has produced a strong, stable government while preserving the personal rights of the individual. So in our constitution, we have law of the government, what the government can do and cannot do, and we have a bill of rights. Our, our constitution gives individual rights to individual people and we as individuals. Most governments do not do that at all. They represent, especially socialist and communist governments, they're represented as the, not as individual, but as the whole. And individual lives don't mean very much to their so-called whole group or their ideological idea um, of government. So um, it says here, we can read what it is right here. Let me see. Let's go on to the next page and we'll come back here. It says, no human government will ever bring perfect peace and harmony to society because human governments are plagued by fallen human nature. Any one of the diverse forms of civil government on the face of earth today may be good or bad depending on the character of the rulers and those being ruled. Man is by nature a sinner and he does not want to be governed by God or by anyone else. Thus, every human government will ultimately come to an end. Not until Christ returns to set up his millennial kingdom will mankind know a form of government that is established in peace and always administered in righteousness. So basically saying there's not going to be a human government that's ever going to be per give us perfect peace and harmony. And we're going to have to strive in the midst to keep our freedoms, aren't we? And we're going to be plagued by sinful human beings. But, at, but the only form of government is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and his setting up his kingdom. So I love that. So let's go back to this one area here. Here's the modern republics. Here's uh, President Ronald Reagan. And he was um, served as president and represented, um, basically represented that constitutional republic that we have. So let's first go back to this section here. The Republic, the Golden Mean. So um, I'll just go over this. So basically you have um, autocracy or right here with tyrants representing tyrants. Let's go over tyrants and bondage and oppression and arbitrariness, submission, uh, coercion, um, reaction, feudalism. All of these, we have my, monarchs and tyrants ruling with um, one rule, autocracy meaning one. And then we have over on this side, we have the extreme of um, democracy ruled by the people, um, demagogues, license, impulse, agitation, discontent, anarchy, chaos, socialism. These all come from um, democracy. So when we talk about um, a demagogue and as a, a leader, a leader gains power by means of, in, in, uh, of passions and appeals to the emotions and prejudices of the people and sways the people by oration and persuasion, stokes fear and exaggerates sometimes lying for the emotional effect and encouraged by uh, fanatical popularity. So when you think of demagogues, you think of those that are very fanatical, um, trying to take over the whole mob you know, as mob control. So here we have here, what they, we want is that golden mean. The golden means is, is what the United States wants, is taking the good out of each and putting them together, making a golden mean. You know, um, uh, tendency has been to go to extremes, 
to appeal to the ignorance and passions and prejudice and emotions of hate and fear with people. And both the extremes here do that. But the golden mean is in a republic, a statesman, liberty or freedom, reason, you know, um, arbitration, getting along, contentment, justice, progress, property rights are all important things in that in in a republic, you know, to be that at that take that point. Republican, basically Republican is a, has that statesmanship and that's what this is telling it's basically telling the golden means is a republic in which we have a republic we're not we don't have a king or queen or a dictator ruling um, hopefully we will not have one in the future and but we don't have a mob rule here either in total chaos we have a central government representative type government with the constitution that protects our rights and the bill of rights so go on to the forms of government. This is kind of a review here, but if you want to review this for the test, it'd be a very good thing. And so the forms of government here, we have theocracy ruled by God. We talked about that. An example would be Israel under Moses and Joshua and Judges, for God ruled through through the judges and ruled, they ruled directly. And um, we're not going to have a really true theocracy until we have Jesus ruling and reigning on earth. The advantages of a perfect justice and, um, and equity would flourish under a theocracy. Disadvantages is that theocracy has, itself has no disadvantage, but man's sinful nature makes it impossible in this world. So in this world, it's really impossible to have a theocracy right now. And now we're going to talk about the um, autocracy or autocracy, which is basically ruling by one person. And we have two different types that we went over, the monarchy and the dictatorship. A monarchy is like the kings and queens, and they have an example of Louis XIV, who was an absolute monarchy in France. It didn't matter uh, any laws or anything. He could kill or, or, or not or do whatever he wanted, really. And also... We have a dictatorship under the Nazi Germany fascist, a socialistic um, dictator, which was Adolf Hitler, right? And we also have dictatorships in communist China, you know, and we, and we think of Stalin, actually a lot of communist dictatorships that take over in the midst of anarchy. So the advantages of a one rule um, person is that with just a ruler, government can be efficient and beneficial to the people sometimes if you had a good ruler, right? Like King David or something. Um, decisions can be made quickly, of course, because only one person makes them. And um, it's that's very advantageous in a national emergency. So especially when you have to declare war, you know, um, disadvantages, they tend to be under tyranny um, and they... Uh, um, are very suppressive of um, individual freedom. They don't give individual freedom, usually. Democracy in itself, we have direct democracy, indirect democracy, and a constitutional republic. Three different types that we went over. And of course, um, we have the examples of ancient Athens. Athens was a direct, in the Greek, in Greece, was a direct democracy that did not last long. The Roman Republic was a democratic republic, and it too didn't last, I say it didn't last long because of sin, um, but it didn't have a constitution. And the United States of America, of course, have, has a constitutional republic. So the advantages are that citizens play a role in governing themselves in a democracy, and some forms of the government offer more democracy than others, and the best forms are those that are constrained by a constitution. So democracy needs to be constrained by a constitution. So disadvantages, true democracy is practical only in a small, close-knit, well-educated, high moral society, which we don't have very many of those, right? Because democracy tends to lead to mob rule, the whole mob rules it, and this leads to anarchy and tyranny, and democracy does not last long in the true state without um, 
having representative very small maybe even 50 or 20 people you can have a democracy but when you get to large amounts of people it just turns into a huge chaotic mob of people you know uh, fickle people and this huge mob of people so that's kind of going over everything um to do with all the different types of governments and so i was going to look here what nation has the only true theocracy? Um, the only th true theocracy is going to be the millennial kingdom when Jesus Christ returns, right? But um, what nation had it was Israel had it under uh, Moses, right? Explain the difference between absolute monarchy and constitutional monarchy. Absolute monarchy, both of them are ruled by a king or queen, but in a constitutional monarchy, they have a constitution to go by. So they that limits the king or queen. So what form of government has increased as the number of monarchies has declined? Um, as monarchies declined, dictatorships um, basically came, um, had took over, you know. Monarchies and then monarchies declined and the families wouldn't be ruling, but dictators. What form of national socialism dominated Germany and are out of, Adolf Hitler, fascism, fascism is what it was called. In what way is socialism an economic system? Uh, socialism is an economic system as it controls the economy of the people, right? Um, basically, um, when you say um, uh, uh, political, it's also political because it basically is a controlling of um, all all of basically the politics in the midst. Anyway, so let's let's look at the socialism. I'm gonna go back there and look so I could give you the exact right. You see here. <laughs> Sorry, let me go on. Uh... Okay, socialism. Socialism is political movement because it seeks political change through legislation and government re uh, regulation of the whole economy, right? And it's a social theory because it maintains um, saying that individuals are very unimportant to the welfare of the whole group. The whole group of people is more important than an individual. Individuals don't have rights. And so, and then religious, because it, since it insists that man is basically good and, um, that basically mankind, if you put them in a good environment, will be good. And it's very humanistic, which is opposite from what the Bible says. So, what type of democracy was exercised in ancient Athens and is still practiced today in New England? And that is direct um, democracy. The, the, the true form of democracy is direct democracy. You know, how is a direct democracy different from a constitutional republic? We went that way, but constitution republic. Um, a direct democracy is just ruled directly by the people. They don't, have, they don't necessarily have rulers. They just rule, they're ruling directly by the people, by many, by the many, all the people ruling together, making decisions. And a, a constitutional republic, a republic is represented as they elect their senators, they elect those to represent them, but they also have a constitution that um, limits what these leaders can do. What is the Latin expression for republic? What was that Latin expression for republic? Republic, um, I see, let me look, at, look it up here. Okay. Hmm. If you don't have it written down, you can look that up. If there's, it's a Latin, the Latin words. I don't know why they ask such a question as that, but let's see. Uh, maybe I'll write it over here. Hmm. No, I don't. So you'll have to look that one up. I'll go back and look it up. I don't have time on this here to do. How are the constitutions of the United States and England different? Our constitution is written down and um, the constitution in England is just through their culture, it's unwritten. So 
And we went over most of these in the Identify. So anyway, so I hope you get that and you'll be able to take your quizzes and get through. So let's go ahead. I was going to go back here to see if I covered the questions on section two. Let's see. I think I did. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop there. So.